Joe. So we have Joe. I will let Joe introduce himself because uh, he can do a better job than I can. But we wanted to include him. Um, uh, the information that we shared on EDA yesterday was all his info. So, um, and he is the, uh, I want to say the product owner for it, uh, proud product owner. But, uh, I'll let Joe and, and introduce himself, yeah. and uh, feel free to toss some questions his way. Well, uh, thanks, Walter. Yeah, uh, my name is Joe Pachota. I am an uh, product owner for a bunch of different camp people. Um, basically, we, I, I was doing some consulting over with Walter before joining um, the BU, uh, and we developed something for a customer similar to what a bunch of different tools allows. Um, and that was fairly successful and basically springboarded into uh, wanting to develop an Intuit product, Intuit uh, capability within Ansible itself. Um, so uh, just here to answer any questions that you guys have um, around the bench of an Ansible and what, what's capable of it. So this is, uh, this is a chance to, to toss out any questions you may have or uh, concerns, thoughts, suggestions, any and all. Just question to the room, who watched the EDA talk yesterday? I'll bring you guys to the first question. I tend to do that. Um, so I was wondering, uh, in the couple of demos that we've seen yesterday, where uh, we had Git instance, you know, and then triggering webhooks to get the push for main branch and then to PR, um, I was wondering how how do you expect to scale the amount of triggers that you have? So do you picture one giant, you know, rulebook with everything inside it, mm -hmm. or is it multiple rulebooks? And how does that work? Because then you need multiple listeners. Um, so maybe you can shed some light on that. Yeah, so we're enabling um, both types of patterns. We expect that most customers, or most people using this, will, uh, will have more than one rule book, which is the capability that, that we're providing with the management interface. So um, the event of an Ansible controller that'll be announced, uh, or that'll be V8 later in the year. Um, that capability is gonna be the interface that allows, uh, similar to how um, AWS allows uh, management of multiple playbooks, mm -hmm. distribution of execution of playbooks, um, the management interface will enable the management of uh, rule books. Now, now that said, um, to your point around the listeners, um, so we've been testing uh, the, uh, the event processing engine scale. Um, currently, we're able to handle in the uh, thousands, I think it's like 6,000 events per segment, um, per second per event source um, plugin. So that's per process listening. Um, now each of those processes can be scaled out and those are execution environments basically in a, in a more uh, managed type solution like via management interface. Um, so those are basically able to be distributed as containers. Okay, thank you. So hopefully that helps. I'm not sure that answers the question that you want. Um, well, kind of. I mean, it, so it kind of springs into a question I had uh, asked yesterday, right? Uh, where, uh, in a context where I would want to use rule books um, outside of AAP or AWX, where yeah. um, perhaps I might run rule books in different system D services or something like that, right? Um, so I was wondering, but you kind of, uh, uh, 
Yeah. You kind of replied to the question, so. Um, so yeah. yeah, so you are you talking about running um, like using system D as an event source for rule books? No, so what I mean is during the demo yesterday, uh, what was shown was um, a demo where in the CLI, you know, we, we ran the Ansible rule book command in foreground. And you know that doesn't really work in real life. I, I don't go into my server and open a tmux or a screen session and then leave that running in the foreground, right? So I need something yeah. to run that, uh, and that might be a system D service. That might be, you know, whatever service management, not necessarily AWS. Yeah, so that would be the that would be the management interface, and the um, the upstream will be available as well. Which is not community. 
Um, those will be supported by whoever is developing the integration. So in the case of, say, a partner like Dynatrace or something, like they, they'll be supporting that integration. Um, which also which also goes to how it how it scales with their products. Um, when it comes to some community integrations, like if FQTT is developed, um, that obviously the scale the scale of that is something that the source plugin developer would have to consider. Um, but uh, obviously, we'll support that as much. Uh, I guess uh, anything uh, in particular maybe that you can share with the, the folks in the room here that maybe is upcoming or, um, uh, I don't know, particularly interesting that you would like to share? Yeah, um, just, just that uh, the excitement around EA has been great to see. Um, we're looking... Um, we're looking to make it not just um, not just a dev preview. Uh, we're looking to GA in the next year. So um, for the more for the more the community can really help build out that those integrations, the more sticky that EDA becomes. And I know this pattern is really exciting for for everybody, even though like it's not a new it's not a new pattern. Like people have been doing this type of thing in their own ways for a while, but the way that we're enabling this um, as code, as uh, a distributable method of that like operational knowledge is um, is something that I think makes sense for the community because it's really distributable knowledge and it's just open source operational knowledge. Um, so the more, the more the community can be involved in helping make sure that we're successful, um, expanding the ecosystem, that, that's, that's great to see. Cool. Thank you. Um, no, that, thank you, Walter. Um, yeah, I mean, if there's any other questions, I'm glad to field them. But that just raised a thought in my head, actually, because I have not considered it from that perspective. Is the intention then that the... Rule books are just as reusable, reshareable between organizations and people as a playbook would be today. If not more. Um, right. so, okay. so playbooks playbooks capture customers like exact processes for um, say remediating an issue, say uh, spinning back a server, creating a new server, something like that. Right. captures exact processes where rule books really capture the operational logic which is more similar between organizations yeah. than the exact yeah. processes maybe yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense, that makes a lot of sense. The, there was so there was a use case that Ricky mentioned yesterday mm -hmm. that was very very interesting to me so you could hook up a rule book to Prometheus metrics and then if the load of your servers go too high you can you can use a rule book to auto scale your infrastructure, yeah. which would you know previously only be available to you know um, you know I don't know uh, cloud formation auto scaling or right. Kubernetes right. 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 so yeah. you know that's, yeah, uh, that's something that didn't break. You know, that's really good mind. because I think a lot of event driven systems seem to fit those two things together, right? Which makes it very hard to take what you've done with your event driven system and put it into somebody else's. So decoupling that's fine. Yeah. That, that's a very good point. It, it really separates that decision making from the act of technical the remediation. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, hybrid is definitely one of the key messages about EDA um, because it really does allow for similar logic that's been done for, say, containerized platforms or for. Cloud platforms to be enabled between both cloud, uh, cloud container and traditional infrastructure. Any other thoughts or questions? 
I think they've had a long week, Joe. It's definitely quieter than it was even this morning. I think a lot of people have had to take the plane. Um, I'll throw one at you that I think Walter already fielded yesterday, but I'm going to do it again just so you've heard it as well. Someone came up to the desk, I think it was Tom, yesterday after the EDA talk, and said, why is it in Java? <laughs> Um, so, the reason that we're using the Jules engine is, um, one, we have, a, there is a large community around Jules already, um, and it's a very mature, um, it's a very mature implementation of a rules engine. Um, the Java component of this solution is fairly invisible to an actual user of the system. Um, they're really more, they're more, users are going to be more concerned with creating rule books and creating event source plugins, which are both YAML and Python. The, the actual integration with Java, while it may be visible now because of the method of installation of a CLI, um, once you're implementing it with say, a managed distributed um, interface like uh, the EDA server, EDA controller, um, that, um, that becomes less visible because it's all built into a built into an execution environment. Yep, fair enough. I wanted to get that on record for some people. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Do people know where to go to find more information? So where can folks go to find more information? Other than the links that I didn't send out from yesterday that I wrote. <laughs> um, well, so uh, there's, a, there's a documentation page on read the docs um, for Ansible Rulebook and EDA Server. Um, so I'd suggest going there for any like uh, capabilities questions or if you have any questions around how to develop event source plugins. That's pretty much the best place. There's a bunch of uh, more Red Hat links that you can go to that actually point there eventually. But if you just want to go directly to the upstream and get like the latest and greatest uh, docs, and it's all on read the docs. There's also an EDA matrix. There's also an EDA matrix room as well. Yes. There is a matrix room as well. Uh, thanks for calling that out. Um, and then uh, the main um, ansible.com slash event dash driven is the main landing page for it. Um, so if you go there, you can basically get to any other any other of our content. We actually just released a blog um, and I think video yesterday um, around event source uh, plugin development. Uh, Colin Cotton develops that um, and released it. So. Uh, that's some great content. Okay. Cool. Well, I think that if anyone doesn't have anything else, I guess we'll uh, let Joe go and uh, uh, I guess give back a little bit of time or open the floor for other discussions. So, thanks for joining, Joe. Sorry you couldn't be here with us. Yeah. yeah thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Much. Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for being here um, for this Ansible Contributor Summit and as well as part of Config Management Camp. It's been a long week but very, very uh, rewarding and also, um, you know, very, um, it's been helpful not just to us but I think also to the whole community 
to discuss some of these issues in the open and, and as well as um, just interacting face to face. I think a lot of us miss that. So I, I know I do. Um, thanks to Mark for helping with the stream and uh, you know, uh, so that also a lot of people online is are joining us and uh, ho hopefully also watching back uh, and you know uh, catching up on some on some of this great content. Um, we have a, a few uh, swag pieces left, and if you if there's something you don't you, you want you don't see here, uh, send me a message, email me, carrotredhead.com. Also goes to you on <laughs> watching online. Feel free to contact me, Cybet, uh, at on Matrix, matrix.org or expo.iam and RFC as well. Um, any feedback via ESPO uh, social channel, ESPO uh, community channels uh, are always welcome, open and welcome to your comments and feedback. Uh, thank you. So um, if you are not subscribed to the Bullhorn yet, please do. Uh, the, this link here, bit.ly bit slash the Bullhorn. Or if you just you know search on on uh, Mastodon on Twitter, we tweet tweet them out or post them every week when they are released. And um, Greg will put out a survey after the event, so um, please give us feedback. It's our first in-person contributor summit, in, especially in Europe, because um, the previous in-person ones were all in in the U.S. Well, at least the last one was like five or six years ago that was in Europe. So for many of us based in Europe, it has, this has been great. Uh, but even then, we have people joining us from other continents, which is, you know, um, really amazing. So uh, our community is so diverse, which is, you know, um, well, it's great, again, to be in person. Uh, we also understand that uh, we, we want to be accessible online as well, so we try to you know make sure that we will have things like recordings and streamings available in online chats, so that you know you can join us from anywhere. Um, what else? Thank you for the Ansible community team for setting this up. You know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's definitely uh, a lot of teamwork. So thanks to everyone involved. Um, well, I mean, we we literally could not do this without you, mm. since we exactly. would not have a job. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, all of you, each and every one of you, you and you and you and you, <laughs> and you and you and you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I won't blabber on anymore. I will wrap things up here. Um, yes. See you just, in the social room. Yes, see you in the social room. See you on, on um, Matrix and RC and Mastodon and... And um, yeah, uh, have a great time and, sorry? Read the bullhorn. Read the bullhorn, yes, thank you Felix, read the bullhorn. <laughs> Lots of great content there and it's, and it's also community contributed. It's, it's not put together by the ESBO community team or anything. It's really, all, all the content there are from the community, from all of you, so thank you. All right, cheers, bye. Bye everyone.